exercise 16 let's prove the following equivalent for pre-additive category C pre-additive category sometimes called C linear category I will give a quick review so first statement it is category C pre-additive category C has finite product secondly it has finite coproduct thirdly it has finite direct sum direct sum is sometimes called byproduct Okay, so firstly, let's recall a category is called pre-additive or k-linear if every home set is actually have a structure of k module. In particular, z-linear means the home set has a binning group structure, and this is compatible with composition, which means that f plus g. This addition comes from the structure of z-group, uh, z-module composes H equals F compose H plus G compose H and so the second position is also additive uh, by linear sorry Okay, so secondly, the definition of direct sum is defined for Z linear for pre additive category C. Take any two object X, X1, X2, we denote X1 direct sum X2, called the direct sum or byproduct. If it exists, is an object endured with which satisfy the following conditions. Firstly, endowed with morphism, four morphism, two kind of embedding, two projection. Give it name I1, I2, P1, P2. That's so just that the following condition satisfies PH, IH, composition equals identity if H equals one or two, which means P1 compose H, uh, P1 compose I1 equals identity of x1 p2 compose x i2 equals identity x2 and p i and p l compose i h equals zero if l doesn't equal h which means p1 compose i2 equals zero p2 compose i1 equals zero thirdly there is one more requirement which is i1 compose p1 plus i2 compose p2 equals the identity map on this x1 direct sum with x2. So here this zero and this addition of morphism makes sense because the home set is z module. Can do addition, it has zero uh, element for the group because we're talking about c being z linear category. So let's See, this exercise we will just only prove this two implies three. Actually, this is kind of classical result in category theory. Uh, once the byproduct exists, it is both the product and the coproduct of this category, and actually. Uh, once it exists for a pair, it will exist for an infinite many objects. So basically, we are only proving the case of a pair. Suppose we have coproduct for x1, x2, denoted by x1 coproduct x2. This gives us two canonic morphism. Let's call it I1 and I2. And we will use these two as in the definition of direct sum, the two embeddings. So, what we still need to construct our two projection P1, P2, such that the condition satisfies. So, how do we construct this P1, P2? 
So we use we use the fact that the home set is Z module. And here is just the inclusive is the definition or universal property of coproduct. Or actually you could even use this to define what is coproduct. It's the same thing if it exists. Okay, so let's in particular take y equals x1. This gives gives us this isomorphism of groups, in particular so it's not only a bijective, this isomorphism group. So on the right hand side you have in particular in this group home x1 x1 you have identity element identity x1 sorry the identity x1 exists by the definition of a category and because this is the same module and the whole home set in particular you have zero element of this group so this isomorphism tells that on the left hand side there should exist a home a morphism from the coproduct to x1 which corresponds to this identity and zero if you translate this into a diagram this is exactly telling this there exists a unique map from coproduct to x1 such that it makes Diagram commutes. And the first part, x1 to x1, we got this identity. x2 to x1, we got this zero. And the existence of this morphism, which we call it P1, is exactly telling us the first two conditions of being direct sum are satisfied. So what is left is this i1, p1 plus i2, p2 equals identity but for that one we use universal property again so let's construct this diagram so again by the universal property of x1 coproduct x2 there exists a unique map such that this diagram commutes but we're putting i1 i1 i2 i2 so the unique map would be the identity one but notice that i1 p1 plus i2 p2 also fits into the diagram because if we check just by how we define p1, p2, this will be p1, which means this diagram still commutes. If you put this here, and similarly make the second diagram commutes, and so it also makes the diagram commutes, but there is to be unique isomorphic make diagram, make, make diagram commutes, and this forces this also to equals identity. And so we are done.